Well, good afternoon and thanks for allowing me to present this paper, Impact in Action. Um, we do have limited time, so a link to the paper in two different locations is provided below. I'm Stephen Seeming. My colleagues are Ed uh, Lapetier and uh, Ken Erickson with Tucson Embedded Systems. Title of the paper, Impact in Action. Well, I'm glad you stayed on, Nathan. Um, basically, conducting multiple phase development efforts aligned to a series of other design qualification efforts, DO-178, the supplement DO-331, reuse guidance AC-2148, and the airworthiness guidance for the Army uh, 7062. The outline for the paper, for the presentation, we want to introduce impact uh, improvements and modernizations of programming's affecting capabilities and technologies. They got a nice acronym out of that one. Um, highlight and describe two current face development efforts. These are multiple face applications to the guidance described on the cover page and in the title of the paper. I want to identify and introduce a new term, model-based open systems approach since now we're bringing in the face and open systems approach and applications into model-based system engineering and identify some additional benefits that you actually get using the awesome uh, model-based system engineering tool if you apply it to face development efforts and then summarize with next steps. So impact, identified improvements and modernizations of programs affecting capabilities and technologies. It was a funded research and development effort by then the Army's uh, named ADD, the director that does the research for advanced aircraft. It was conducted in 2014, 2015 with a report printed out. It was one of a series of S&T research efforts and studies the objective and intent of impact were to prepare the aviation community for using improved tools and processes in order to modernize the design and development capabilities that exist back in 2014 so that it can be prepared for to the next generation of aircraft designs defined by the vision and referenced in the paper. The development process for the next generation aircraft will be prepared for advanced capabilities that will be required to address tomorrow's complex battle space environments. Uh, that battle space is both manned and unmanned teams and aircraft and ships as in terms of NAVC operating in complex operational environments that is day, night, all weather, um, hostile environments with terrain over land, sea, et cetera. Um, this will ensure that the military will own the environment, with quotes, through a collection of highly integrated advanced aircraft uh, and capabilities operating collectively as a set of interoperably advanced capabilities, uh, that is, a system of airborne systems of systems. And there's uh, essentially a lot of references in the paper. So, in bottom line, IMPACT was a report for the gaps in tools and processes needed for the next generation um, aircraft designs. So we want to jump into the description of two phase development efforts, pictorially with the phase architectures. We have the Arkham project on the left and the AGX EIS. Arkham is the Army's aviation radio control manager. And the AGX is an aircraft gateway with the X to represent next generation, and EIS is the external interface systems. Side by side, we have a comms domain on the left, aircraft survivability equipment onto platforms. Um, we have the face diagrams. You can see in very small images down below the devices that we're going to control. We have several radios on the left and aircraft survivability on the right. Arkham is the Army's comms domain and it's shared comms across the aircraft. And AGS is the domain for aircraft survivability initially focused on the Apache aircraft. 
Side by side, we have face, five face UOCs for Arkham, seven face UOCs for the AGX EIS. Jumping to the bottom, both of these programs will be verified to be face conformant and run through airworthiness. Difference a little bit there, we got the Army Face VA on the left, and we got the TES Savvy Face VA on the right. On the left, we have the more generic airworthiness with a very long new name and acronym, the Capability, Combat Capability Development Command Aviation Missile Command System Readiness Directorate-Airworthiness. On the right, it'll be the Apache Subdivision of Airworthiness. So ARCM has five modules, that's the radio control component, communications manager, the mission and network planning, and the bulk data manager. On the right-hand side for the AGX, it's all the aircraft survivability equipment that's currently hosted on the Apache. We have two ver versions of the radar warning receivers. We have an MRFI, Modern Radar Frequency Interferometer. We have a common missile warning system with the um, counter dispenser Kirkham. We have two versions of laser detecting sets. We have an infrared jammer and a radio frequency jammer on the Apache as the aircraft survivability equipment suite. Again, they'll be both run through face conformance and airworthiness, different flavors of VAs and different flavors of airworthiness kind of speaks to the robustness that we're using these tools in this environment. So I wanted to point out if those are familiar or not with the DO-178, that there's life cycle and side by side, these are identical. Um, if looking at what I refer to as a DO-178 dashboard, essentially there's 71 objectives. At the back of DO-178, they have tables and you need to comply with each of these objectives. It's essentially a life cycle in order to go through airworthiness. They have um, 22 life cycle design artifacts, 11.1 through 11.22. And for DAL C, design assurance level C, you have 62 objectives. I want to highlight, and it pulls out a little bit later in another couple slides, the green versus yellow. Yellow is an objective that needs to be performed and demonstrated on a target architecture leaving the greens, the other ones, to be performed off of a target architecture. And this kind of leans into a reuse potential that'll be illustrated on the next couple of figures. So again, on the bottom, we have airworthy uh, face and then airworthy qualifications on two different flavors of airworthiness over at the US Army. Then we get into the benefits of a model-based open system architecture and the proven process here. Side by side, my dashboard enhances. And I'll read the title for this. When we use DO331, which is the model-based supplement of DO178C, we have this idea of theory of sufficient. If you have a sufficiently described model, you can have the auto generation of artifacts that are used for both FACE and DO-178. That's the embedded control code, the models, the test cases and procedures, the results with tracing, and all of the lifecycle design artifacts. They qualify this is that our capability model in AWESOME, a different tool, is sufficient. Um, it generates more than the FACE data models, but it allows for that efficiency to um, generate the embedded code. Um, Nathan just asked for the TSS to be generated. It generates that, the cases and procedures, et cetera. So when you're looking at the dashboard below, you're getting a lot of these objective compliances generated through the use of the tool. Additionally, since we have the green versus yellow, we have now the opportunity for reuse for the reuse guidance AC2148. So the model-based open system architecture used in the SAVI tool allows for the development, test, and integration of six additional compliance objectives with little additional level of effort. So essentially you're getting more from the same. 
So what we're getting is we're getting B-like design and testing for C-like um, levels of effort. The efforts that we're bringing in, the compliance objectives are the six are listed on the bottom left of the table. We end up bringing high level requirements being compatible with the target architecture, low level requirements being compatible with the target architecture, which is an extreme amount of work. Low level requirements are verifiable that software architecture is um, conformed on the target architecture. And then software architecture is verifiable as well as source code. This chart is animated, but it's not animating on this one, so I'll go ahead. Um, the model-based system, open systems approach used in the tool has reuse benefits as well. When we look at the ratio of the green versus yellow, the green, as they are, the design artifacts, as they are, can be reused on different platforms. Whereas the yellow identified and separated as it needs to be compatible with the target architecture, this reusable software component face needs to be ported to the target real-time operating system and the processors. And then we auto-generate and run the testing artifacts to be executed on these targets in order to support the demonstration of the yellow compliance objectives there. Therefore, we're able to achieve the goal of the FACE approach, rapid acquisition of reusable aviation capabilities of cyber physical systems on complex systems of systems aircraft, regain ownership of aircraft interfaces and promote aviation plug and play in the procurement of reusable portable capabilities and we get to field them a much faster. So essentially you'll build on the left, the original aircraft for airworthiness, put all your um, artifacts in a repository, and then you can port these artifacts to the different architectures as shown on the bottom there, reuse 90% of the compliance objectives illustrated in the, the uh, chart above, and then run the 10 remaining percent of the specific platform resources uh, in uh, getting conformance on different aircraft platforms there. So essentially it results in a fleet of different type of vehicles having compatible compa capabilities um, also um, distributed in a much ex uh, expedient way. So if we got some time and questions, this has been briefed in several different uh, formats at the Pentagon. This is a huge chart to discuss back to. Summary with next steps. Our tool is commercially available. Um, my division here, we actively participate in the FACE Consortium since its inception in 2010. We lead in several working groups. We also provide development engineering services. We are a sanctioned VA, the Savvy VA. Lessons learned from using the ecosystem in a cross-organizational team. Both of these are being developed with different uh, companies. Uh, provides insight to how complex systems of systems, example is the uh, future vertical lift family of systems, will be developed in our near future. So we're on schedule to develop and field in 2021 two different sets of multiple face development efforts um, that align with both face conformance and airworthiness efforts uh, corresponding to the armies and following guidance of the 2148 reuse guidance. The next steps will be indirect and direct development for the future vertical lift family of systems that awaits the community. Um, essentially that aircraft includes FLARA, which is the future attack reconnaissance, reconnaissance aircraft, and FLARA, the future long range assault aircraft. And we're currently uh, supporting JMR efforts, the Air Vehicle Mission System Architecture IDD, and the FAF, which is the architectural design for the uh, FVL. So with that, I go to a question slide, and we should have some time for questions. 
If you need to find additional information, you got links on the bottom and on the cover page, our contact information as well. So thank you very much, and you guys have a great day. Oh, Stephen? Yes. We just had a question come through, if you don't mind. Okay. Sure. Uh, I can read it to you. I'm getting bombed. Savvy does. I'm getting bombed, and I can't read the question. I can read it to you. Yep. Yes, thank you. Does each of the UFCs have its own DSDM, or are they aligned to one? If one, Great. which one? Great question. The, it'll be a generic DSDM for the comms domain, and we're going to make one for the aircraft survivability domain. That's an excellent question. So essentially it leads into the reuse plug and play. So right now the left one, we're, we're spinning two radios. Um, we could then add the additional capabilities for another radio, and that'll be a, a D, comms domain DSDM. For aircraft survivability, we have seven devices, and we could spin that, take in or take out other devices to uh, make that aircraft survivability domain. Excellent question. One domain for each domain. One model for each domain. Is there anything else? Nope, that is the question. So if any of you come through after um, we left this presentation, we'll get those questions to Stephen and get you an answer. But those are all the questions as of right now. So thank you very much, Stephen.